breathe 24,000 to 30,000 times a day, approximately 12 to 20 times per minute. So this is the normal respiratory rate, which we can read in our Dr. Google. But are we aware who is the real hero of our breathing? Can you guess? It's our diaphragm. Diaphragm is the main breathing muscle in our body. But we talk less about it and we have appreciation of about the diaphragm very less amongst the media or amongst even the medical colleges or as a physiotherapist, I have been taught less on the appreciation of the breathing muscle, that is the diaphragm. So now I'm focusing today in my video to appreciate that diaphragm. And I'm going to introduce you more benefits of the diaphragm, how your diaphragm acts as an integrator in your body. So when we talk about the diaphragm as a breathing muscle, the diaphragm function doesn't stop only with the respiration, that is the breathing part, but it is also the main muscle for regulating other physiological systems in our body, like our circulation and immune function, excretion, metabolism, and uh, emotional regulation, and our posture, which is very much, very much important for our breathing. So with that being said, I'm going to uh, talk a little more about the attachments of diaphragm in this video. If you are new to this channel, I'm Devi Sinda, a respiratory physiotherapist, psychotherapist, and a counselor, and a health coach. And I'm also a founder of Teletherapies. So if you have not subscribed to my channel before, please do subscribe and uh, follow the videos. I do release a monthly free educational resources for the lung and mind education. So let's dive into this video now. Diaphragm is a unique muscle. And to appreciate this uniqueness, we need to understand the structural attachments inside our body. It's like an analogy, like you cannot make a cake without understanding the ingredients and labeling the ingredients and the right proportion of it. So let me introduce my little model here, Jimmy. And with Jimmy, I'm just going to give you an overview of uh, uh, attachments of the diaphragm and uh, certain other structures which is more related to the diaphragm and that is a main crucial cause of our uh, back pain and our posture and our breathing and our circulation. Okay, so let's then dive into this video. So as you can see, as this model has rib cage, okay, the breastbone, the center, and you can see the abdominal cavities here, okay, the liver, the stomach, and the gut, yeah. And now the rib cage here, as you know, the rib cage uh, is attached to the center of the, is the breastbone here, and the rib cage consists of 12 ribs on each side, okay. So now let's see what is behind the rib cage. Okay. So let me take this off and open up. So behind the rib cage, we have our beautiful lungs. So now let's take the rib cage off. And behind the rib cage, we can see our lungs, one on each side, yeah, the right lung and the left lung, and uh, the heart between the lungs and the center, yeah. So let's now turn the rib cage here. I can, I hope that you can see the diaphragm is attached internally to the rib cage here. Okay, so I've just made up this um, as an attachment. So if we put back the rib cage for your understanding, 
you can understand where the diaphragm sits. So now the, the diaphragm, which is the dome-shaped muscle, um, as you can see, this uh, orange color thin, thin structure here, and uh, it's uh, attached to the um, rib cage behind the coastal region. So from the rib seven to twelve are uh, on either side. Okay, and uh, it is a flap-like structure. Um, imagine like a jellyfish. Okay, it's a flap-like structure which is attached uh, at three points in our body. So the origin is uh, three levels. Um, one is from your lower end of your breastbone, zygoid process, um, which we um, call it as, um, and it's from the posterior part of the zygoid process. And then the lateral origin is from the ribs, from the uh, cartilage end of the ribs, um, from rib seven to 12. And uh, it also um, has an origin from the lumbar vertebrae, which is your lower backbone, Okay, um, so the lumbar region has uh, five lumbar vertebrae, L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5, as it is there in this um, structure here. And this is the, this part is the sacrum, and this is the L1 and L2, L3, L4, L5, okay. And so it has, from the posterior part, um, the origin is from the lumbar, Vertebrae, as I mentioned, and so it has two crews, so the right and the left crews. So the right crews origins from the levels of L1 to L3, and the left crews origin from the level of um, L1 to L2. Okay, and so these are the origin from where the diaphragm is uh, originating, and then it then it gets inserted into the central tendon, uh, which is the aponeurosis of the Diaphragm. So diaphragm is the only muscle is uh, inserted inside a muscle um, comparative to the other uh, muscles in our body. And uh, apart from this origin, um, the diaphragm also supported by the ligaments. And uh, the ligaments are very important, plays a very important role in the stability of the diaphragm because those ligaments are also passing through the, uh, the structures that's passing through between the ligaments are the very important muscle, which I'll be describing later. So now we'll talk about the ligament, the medial and the lateral arcuate ligament. So the medial arcuate ligament, uh, to show it in the structure, uh, I'm just going to take it very, very closer. So the medial arcuate ligament um, is attached to the L2, L1, okay, and also the spinous, um, the coastal part, not the spinous part, the coastal part of the um, L1 vertebrae, and that's the medial arcuate ligament. And the lateral arcuate ligament starts from the uh, coastal part of the uh, L1 lumbar vertebrae to the lower end of the 12 ribs. Okay, so um, so it is the 12th rib, so it attaches the lower end, so that is the lateral arcuate ligament. So I'll repeat again the medial arcuate ligament is attached to the L2 L1 and the coastal part of the L1 vertebrae, and uh, that is the medial arcuate ligament, and the lateral arcuate ligament is attached from the coastal uh, part of the L1 to the 12th rib. So I want you to imagine that in your body, um, even if you're not a medical person, why I say that is because the two major important muscles passes through between these ligaments. So um, the two important muscles are, one is the quadratus uh, lumborum muscle, okay, which is passing um, beneath the lateral arcuate ligament, okay, and uh, that muscle, quadratus lumborum muscle, is very much important for the stability of the diaphragm and the spine, and so if the quadratus lumborum muscle is weak, you might feel the pain while you're coughing and sneezing, and uh, 
uh, behind the major arcuate ligament is another important muscle called psoas major muscle. And the psoas major muscle is uh, very important um, uh, for our emotional well-being and stability. And uh, although it is majorly involved in the flexion activities, um, but it is considered to be the uh, seat of the soul uh, because the tightness of the soul's muscle creates constipation, one thing, and it also irritates our emotional well-being, um, disturbing the stability of our emotional well-being. Um, so this is a very important muscle, and I'm, in the next part of this video, I'll be talking through how to release the source major muscle and improve your by improving your diaphragmatic function. Um, so that's another video to go through uh, in the second part of this video. But for now, I want you to understand if you imagine your body part and if you put your hands on on the sides of your hip, okay, at the back, okay. So there is a quadratus lumborum, um, and if you place below your lower end of your ribs okay so as i demonstrated in the other video putting your steel grip around your lateral part of your lower end of your ribs and then sliding and taking this and the twisting your hand behind and that is where your quadriceps lumborum is sitting okay so whenever you're actually having a weak quadriceps lumborum then it is a cause of um, pain when you sneeze or cough it's very important for the quadrus number to be maintained stronger for the stability of your diaphragm. Now, let me talk about the uh, nervous supply uh, to our diaphragm, uh, both the motor and the sensory nervous supply of our diaphragm. Okay, um, what does that mean? Um, for a bulb to light up, we need the main switch and a connection, a circuit connection from the main switch to the bulb for the bulb to be lit up because the switch gives a command for the bulb to light up. So likewise, uh, uh, autonomous function, a diaphragm is an involuntary muscle um, and uh, that is having a command from our brain center and uh, the commands are traveled through the um, nervous system. The phrenic nerve is the main nervous system for the motor function. Uh, it is uh, uh, rising from the cervical region C2 to C5. And uh, the main function of the motor function is the contraction of the muscle. So uh, the muscle, while contraction, um, the insertion is called towards the origin and the diaphragm is flattening. And uh, so um, this is this uh, this action actually the contraction of the diaphragm here it pulls down the diaphragm down okay and uh, then that that is increasing the thoracic intrathoracic volume and when the intrathoracic volume increase the intrapulmonary pressure within the lungs falls down and there is a flow of air from the atmosphere and uh, with more of oxygen, hopefully, and that fills in the lung with the oxygen. And uh, at the same time, while this action is happening, while the diaphragm is pulled down, it increases the intra-abdominal pressure, which then um, increases the flow of um, the blood, impure blood, from the lower part of the body through the vena cava, and the, the diaphragm actually acts as a transduct. Uh, there is a three major openings in the diaphragm, and it has, acts as a transduct to the vena cava, um, esophagus, and the iota. And so the the blood from the lower part of the body is flowing through the vena cava into the right part, and then taken to the lungs for the purification. That's how our whole system of body purification happens in a fraction of second and it's when you think about it, it's really fascinating so this is how this is how our diaphragm is helping us to gain that oxygen and then expelling that carbon dioxide out it is not mainly the lung the lung acts as a um container of the gases but it is with the help of this main inspiratory muscle that is the real hero of our breathing our breathing function is made efficient and we're able to be alive okay and um, 
so this is one function of the diagram. I'll be talking um, uh, about uh, more functions of the diagram in my next video series um, and in relation to our posture and our emotions and uh, how to relieve our back pain. So I hope this video was useful and I will check out with your next video in the part two of this series, uh, talking through about the diaphragmatic breathing, uh, correction of your posture, and how to correct the tight soles major muscle. If you felt this video was informative, please do like and subscribe and leave a comment. And do share with your friends and network. Signing off now, Davy Sundar and my model, Jimmy.